Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Fraunhofer EAS with Andre Longa, who's going to talk today about aging effects on transistors. Andre, as we move down into the most advanced nodes, uh, the aging effects are becoming more severe. What are you finding are some of the big problems that we have to deal with? Well, I think one of the big problems in terms of reliability for transistors is how to measure enough information that we need um, to characterize the device behavior. So what's new here on the aging that we haven't seen in the past? I think this is um, that we have to consider multiple effects in terms of aging. So when we start with the IV curves of a transistor, um, you can measure the train current over VGS and you have a particular curve looking something like this for VDS lin. And you have a different curve when you increase uh, the train voltage, which will close up like this for VDS sub. So when it comes to aging, independent of what the effect particularly is, whether it's BTI or whether it's HCI, it leads to a reduction in the train current that you can see in the uh, IV curves. So you might end up with a line here and a different line here corresponding to the um, train voltage that, that we have seen so far. So when it comes to measurements, you do not really observe the complete IV curves, but only particular points. So you might define this current here to be ID lin. You can define this current here to be ID sat. You can define the uh, derivative of this curve here that was the maximum, uh, which is G max somehow. And you can find the threshold voltage uh, somewhere down here, depending on, on its definition. In the past, when you did this kind of measurement at 14 and 16 nanometers, what, what happened? What was different? Well, so far we only considered a single characteristic. So over time, we have measured, let's say, the evolution of the threshold voltage, VTH. And uh, when you plot it on a log-log scale, uh, the shift in the threshold voltage over time you end up with uh, curves like this. Um, they were pretty straight. And once we uh, move to smaller technology nodes, you have some different effects. For example, the, um, the slope of this line gets uh, smaller when you increase uh, the, stress, uh, the stress. And you end up with non-constant um, slopes of these curves. So this is a particular effect that has been around uh, for quite some time. But um, we believe that the impact gets worse at smaller technology nodes. So how do we move from the measurements to the modeling? Well, for the IC designer now, the problem is that the sole shift in threshold voltage or maybe the shift in ID SAT or ID DIN alone is not sufficient for him. What he needs is a simulation model that maps the measured shift of the threshold voltage, for example, to his compact model, being uh, by let's say changing some model count parameters to express aging or maybe by adding a sub-circuit around the nominal transistor to express the aging behavior. So it depends on whether you want to have a sub-circuit model or a model count approach by adapting some parameters. And this becomes much more significant as we start moving into things like um, artificial intelligence in cars, right? You really have to understand how all these effects are working uh, together and against each other. That's true, because uh, reliability is a much more important point when it comes to long-living applications or, uh, let's say, applications which uh, have to fulfill a particular level of security and which require a lot of computational performance. Depending upon the characteristics that you're, you're, you're trying to measure here, does that affect the models? Uh, yes, it does. So on the first way, you can measure whatever you want. It depends on how you transfer it to your model, either by, as I said, um, changing model card parameters or by constructing a sub-circuit. So you might construct a model that expresses your shift in the threshold voltage. And uh, for particular application scenarios, this might already be sufficient. But for digital circuits, let's say, ID SAT might be very interesting as well because the threshold voltage defines when your gate shifts and ID SAT somehow defines how fast the switching event takes place. So you have to find a model that considers both the shift in threshold voltage over time and stress and the shift in ID SAT over time and stress. We could also, um, let's say, extend the model towards a more analog application 
And then you'd also have to consider IDLIN and GMAX and maybe some other um, electrical characteristics in between, sub slope or some um, points of the IV curves here in between as interim uh, drain source voltages. It always depends on what you want to have and what you have to, what you require the model to, uh, to be able to capture. So what happens when you measure BDS and BGS combinations? So what is usually done in practice, we say you come to stress, to the stress phase of the measurements for um, degradation. You can show the line that we have here, the drain source voltage VDS and the gate source voltage VGS. So please consider it to be um, absolute numbers because polarity doesn't really matter here. Um, so now it depends on the effect that you want to measure. When it comes okay. to BTI degradation, then you somehow define your stress tones to be here, different uh, gate source voltages at a zero drain source voltage. And then you can measure how the, the, the characteristics of your transistor shift. But with BTI, you need to pay attention to the recovery effect and you need to define beforehand whether you want to include it in your measurements and in your measurement results and in your model or whether you do not. For hot carrier injection, it's more like I define a large VDS to be the stress condition. So I'm somewhere on this line here. And in the past, well, we then have defined the gate source voltage to be the value that leads to the maximum of the substrate current for this particular drain source voltage. So you can repeat it for different drain source voltages and you end up with, let's say, different points over here. As a next dimension, you can also add temperature, which is really important for um, NBTI or PBTI, which is not that important for carrier injection, but it has an impact there as well. So the, the conditions that you've defined here, are they sufficient uh, for today or will they have to be changed? I think for today they are still sufficient. So these points here, having the maximum of the substrate currents, they lead to a maximum degradation for this particular drain voltage. But when, once you change the gate voltage here in this line, then the model or your measurement results are too pessimistic. So it always depends on whether you want to have additional effects in your degradation model and you would have to measure some additional points, for instance, here, here, and here. And uh, there are also some studies showing that the point here, VG, as leading to the maximum of substrate current, changes with technology. What happens at the next couple of nodes? Will we be able to solve these problems and identify all the necessary conditions, or are we starting to move into an unknown area? Well, I think there is still a lot of research that has to be done. Uh, in the future technology nodes and uh, yeah, the yeah, next, let's say, months and years uh, in order to see which effects over here are really important and which are not and um, maybe to separate out what really has to be measured in order to get reasonable degradation models. And all this is pointing to more reliability in the circuitry, right, as we start moving forward? Yes, it is. By transferring the measurement results from here to a degradation model, you are able to analyze how your circuit will behave at a particular, um, let's say, scenario of operation over time. So far, the measurement results, they are taken by, let me define the end-of-life criterion to be 10% shift, and then you can see where your measurement lines hit the 10%. There might also be an additional step of calculating back to, um, let's say, typical use voltage, which might be down here. But it's always the case to say, well, 10% degradation is end-of-life criterion. When it comes to a complete integrated circuit, 10% shift of the threshold voltage for a particular device might already be too much for the circuit to be working, but it might already be, or it might even be accept acceptable depending on the application and on the particular transistor and this function in this circuit. Does time of modeling go up at each new node? Uh, I fear it will. So far, um, as far as we know, there is no um, standard model or no model which is uh, feasible for a particular node and which can easily be calibrated based on measurement results. Going back to models, are you really modeling on the shift of the compact model parameters or the subcircuits? Well, this is a really good question. So the first one would be when you use a transistor itself with its compact model, um, let me just state it like this, and you change the transistor itself, it always depends on the base transistor, what you really have to do. So it might be, or it is different whether you're using a BSIM-3 or BSIM-4 transistor, 
it's different when it comes uh, to PSP or HiSIM or whatever you have. The advantage is that you can use the built-in physics uh, which is available inside the model. So by adapting particular parameters you might uh, be able to well capture the effect, effect of degradation. But once you change the model because you are going to the next technology node, there have to be some adaptations at least or maybe even a new model. The other idea would be to express the degradation as uh, in terms of a sub-circuit around this fresh transistor. So you leave the transistor unchanged and you might have to add a voltage source here and maybe a current source in parallel to the uh, train source region. And uh, by adapting the parameters of these two sources, you can also express a degradation. So the advantage here is once you have found a solution, um, it will work for this particular technology at least, or for neighboring technologies, independent on what the base model is, whether it's BSIM or PSP. So the, the represent, representation will be fine. Uh, the problem here is how to define uh, the two sources. And uh, as we had it before, adapting the model count parameters or defining the sources here depends on which electrical quantities, whether it's uh, PTH, IDLIN, IDSAR, GMAX, you really want to have inside your model and which terms of data and terms of stress voltage uh, combinations is available in your measurements. Andre Manga, thanks for a great explanation of a very complex subject. You're welcome.